I'm Jory May. And I'm Leo. Coming up next is all your favorite things on just one channel. It's the journal. Hello everyone, welcome to The Journal, Episode 3. I'm your host, Jory May. Today, we'll be exploring the world of food, coffee, dating, music, and dancing. All the things I love in one episode. Wow, let's get started. At the age of just 19, Ariane de los Santos has reached that stage of her life where she seeks personal evolution. She has decided that one of the best ways to achieve this is through consciously integrate with her Filipino culture. On her journey, she plans to cook an irresistible Filipino dish. Let's check out Ariane's first time cooking a traditional meal. My name is Ariane de los Santos and this is my journey to reconnecting with my Filipino culture. I was born actually in um, Saudi Arabia and you might think it's a little odd considering I'm Filipino but that's actually a common place for people in Philippines to get born because it's actually near the Philippines and it's just a place for good job opportunities for people to seek out in and that's why that's where my father like he went out there and that's where he met my mom and I guess you know the rest, so. <laughs> uh, my name is Kamisha and I'm Ari's roommate. I've lived with her for about a year or so now. When I met her, she wasn't really connected to her Asian background. Like growing up in Toronto, I feel like I feel like I shared this experience too. But, uh, Toronto is such a multicultural city, so she's been connected with a lot of people that come from a lot of different backgrounds and she's formulated friendships with these people. So I seen her really drawn to like more of the urban side um, of uh, the urban side of the city versus like her, her Asian side but now I see her she's grown a lot because she's more drawn back and try to connect back like with her family and try she's been wanting to get like a more of a sense of home to more ground herself to grow as an individual to me I feel like family and religion is probably one of the main two uh, important parts or aspects, I guess you could say, in our culture. I have tried to make dishes here and there that my mom did recommend to me to make because I do feel homesick at times and I feel like making these dishes, especially lumpia, um, it makes me feel like I'm at home again. It gives me that whole sense of me being at more with my family because my mom before she would make uh, lumpia every Sunday dinner and I don't know, it's just, it just doesn't feel right anymore when that, that they're gone, but I guess being able to make it would give me that sense of, you know, I'm still at home even though I'm not with them. So today, I guess um, I'm going to show you how to make Wimpia for the first time, my first attempt. So, um, wish me luck! I can't tell if I've already burnt them or not. I think you should turn the stove off. But are they even cooked? They are. Um, oh, Ari, they are over cooked. Okay. Oh, well, they're over cooked. Yes. They are over cooked. Are they really? I was trying to aim it for that dark stuff. Wow. Ari, look. They're over cooked. They're jumping at me. Yeah. 
do it bit by bit. You know, like so, let me do this. Well, my mom does it like this. My mom minces it this way just because it's easier. We'll go one way and then we'll do the opposite way. Oh my god, my eyes. I can't even open them anymore. So my journey actually started off when um, I moved out, ever since I moved out of my parents' house uh, a year ago, and uh, I don't know, I think ever since then I've been feeling a little distant with them and my culture, so I want to try to get back into it, and lately I've been doing a couple things that I used to do with my family, like for example, um, I would pray every night, actually I have a rosary, it's my own personal rosary that my grandma gave to me uh, before I left and moved out of my house and she said it's just something for me to use like when I ever need to pray so that's what I started doing too and here and there I would try to like make a couple snacks oh no this one's already breaking god damn it this one's gonna break I forgot to put salt. It's not only the salt that's missing. But pepper. It tastes like nothing. I taste oil. <laughs> Olive oil. YouTube DIY. Yes. I tried. You tried to tell me that you failed miserably. Please do wait time now. Here on the journal, we don't judge, but I think it's safe to say that Aria needs a do-over when it comes to making lumpia. On this journey, she discovered that cooking is just not for her. I tune into a sequel to see what she would try next and to connect herself with her Filipino background. For those of you who don't know, lumpia is simply just a spring roll of Chinese origin commonly found in the Philippines. Now, whether that failed attempt at cooking made Ariane feel more at home, culturally is debatable, but it was all the evidence we needed to prove how much closer she is to understanding herself. And boy, could I use a cup of coffee myself to keep up with that girl. Speaking of coffee, Nadia Duji is someone who knows where you can get best lattes. With her Instagram account, Lots of Lattes, she shows the best spots for people to grab a coffee and just enjoy the cafe atmosphere. 
Hi, my name is Nadia Duji, and I'm a current marketing graduate from the University of Ottawa. During my degree, I ended up finding my entrepreneurial side, and by that I mean my Lots of Lattes account. How do you ask for a date? Hi, my name is Nadia Duji, and I'm a current marketing graduate from the University of Ottawa. During my degree, I ended up finding my entrepreneurial side, and by that I mean my Lots of Lattes account. Um, Lots of Lattes is my Instagram account where I write different coffee shops based on different criterias. And it's a really good way for me to explore the hidden gems in the city and also motivate me to really get out my creative side. As I started visiting all these different coffee shops in Ottawa and really finding Ottawa's different hidden gems, I found all my friends, or the majority of my friends, asking me on where to go um, in order to study or which coffee shop to really go to. And that's really where everything started. Um, I set up my Instagram account and I decided to rate each different coffee shop based on four criteria that were the most important to me. And those were atmosphere, vibe, Wi-Fi outlets, and quality. After graduating, I decided to move back to my hometown of Toronto, and I thought, why not continue my Lots of Lattes blog in Toronto? I found that growing up, even though I grew up in Toronto, I don't really know the city too well, so it would probably be a good idea to explore the city through its coffee shops and really find its hidden gems. Toronto has a pretty big coffee scene, so there's a huge option of coffee shops to visit. One of my business objectives for Lots of Lattes include to increase my fan base to um, at least 10,000 followers. And af after I reach a certain amount of followers, I have different um, business plans set up. For example, once I reach 5,000 followers, I'm going to um, launch a merchandising aspect of the brand. So I will probably have coffee mugs with the Lots of Lattes brand on it, maybe different quotes, um, maybe uh, I could include different cities, etc. Okay, so one of the really interesting facts about my Lots of Lattes brand, at least to me, is that I feel like it'll really give me a lot of insight into um, opening my own cafe uh, one day. So because I'll have like literally a whole life's experience of visiting different coffee shops and rating and really knowing what to look for and really like analyzing the diff like the uniqueness of every different cafe because a lot of cafes are very unique and they have different marketing strategies which are very interesting. Anyways, uh, the point I'm getting at is that I feel like this is a really big advantage to me <laughs> in terms of opening my own coffee shop. Well, Nadia sure has been to a lot of cafes. Next time I need a nice spot to study, I'll look at her Latte Latte's account. She really gives some good tips on how to spot a coffee shop with good service and good atmosphere. So if you haven't already, make sure to check out Nadia's cafe ratings on Instagram at Latte Latte's. Thank you for staying tuned in so far. Now let's go check out what my co-host Leo has in store for us. Hello everybody, Leo here. Wow, we've been seeing some great food and drinks so far. I am getting hungry. Did anyone else notice that this week's episode basically makes up a perfect date? I mean, come on. A perfect latte and a nice home-cooked meal? How could we not include a documentary about dating itself? Now it's the time on a journal for a little she loves me, she loves me not kind of a vibe. How many of you out there have ever tried a little app called Tinder? I wonder if that's been working out for people. It seems cool and all stumbling across people you may have the same interest with, but I'm curious to see what kind of experience people have had using the app. Maybe I can get some tips for myself. How do you ask for a date? Tinder? Fucking swipe right? Well, is there another way? And? This is Woody. Well, I have a ticket for the High Teen Carnival Saturday, and, well, would you like to go? Really? No thanks, Woody. Hmm. Well, suppose he did it this way. Uh, 
using dating apps since first year. I'm in third year right now. Uh, I've been using specifically Tinder um, on and off, uh, you know, periodically. I've been using it just because my friends had it. Uh, they all downloaded it at the same time and I was like, you know, why not? Um, that'll be pretty fun. I met one of my best friends off Tinder. Um, so what happened was I saw her profile and I actually swiped left. I didn't like what was going on there. I saw her on Young and Dundas, Young and Dundas Square. Um, and she saw me at the same time. So we made eye contact and I tried to avoid it, but you know, she, she tracked me down and um, asked me, you know, what's going on? <laughs> I found out that she was really, really one of the coolest people I've ever met. And uh, yeah, from then on, been the uh, best buds. Like everyone has a phone and you know, it's not like it's a paid app too, it's free to download. So literally anyone can do it. Hi, Ann. What you doing Saturday night? Well, I, I guess I'm busy. Oh, yeah? Any chance of giving him the brush off for me? Well, of all the nerve! Yes, I'm afraid of being catfished. Um, you know, I feel like it's really scary just to think of someone in a certain way, you know, you think this person's actually uh, 20 and uh, good-looking, into sports, I don't know. And um, when you meet them in person, they're a 40-year-old cat lady. That, to me, is... Scary. Do people actually like swipe through the pictures and then stay on that picture for a while? Yes. Oh. I do that. Oh. I usually just the first picture. Oh. I don't know. That's just me though. Okay, so maybe I should hop on Tinder sooner than I thought. I think I really need this app. I just hope I don't get catfished. Man, that would be scary. I mean, you get ready to go on a date to meet the person you've been chatting with, expecting them to look the way they do in their picture, and instead, you're meeting Mrs. I'm 30 years older than you. I don't know what I would do in this situation, but hopefully that won't happen. Tinder, I have faith in you. So, let's do a quick recap here. We've got a foot down, got a date, now we need to learn some poems. Nathan Baye is a great spoken word poet and a dancer. I heard some of his poetry and man, he's so good. You guys might even get to see him live in action later during the show, so don't go anywhere. Can't wait to learn some poetry and some dance moves. Poetry is actually like a story for me, like, yeah. Listen, what's the point of me being sick if my sickness doesn't give you wealth or health? Creativity was given by the creator to help people find light when times are dark, but the words I would spark would enslave more than the times of Rosa Parks. Okay, growing up in middle school, you know, like, I was kind of always like a mama's boy, and I always kind of liked girls, and then the best way to get to girls was poetry. So then, you know, it was roses are red, violets are blue, whatever I can do to get to you type of, type of guy or whatever. So then, yeah, like, I was just doing poetry first to get to girls, and then at one point, poetry became my way of expressing myself just in general. Um, how does a poem... Poem, poem, yes, poem, sorry, I don't know what poem is. Um, how does a poem begin, for, uh, sorry, I have a list where so sometimes words just don't flow out properly, like, full of, I'm kidding. Um, okay, how does a poem start out for me? The poem, ah! <laughs> Forget the word. I do poetry, but I can't say the word poem, oh my god. Um, how does that thing start for me? It starts because um, normally, like, I go through something. And then when I go through something, it kind of ponders on my mind. And I tell myself, yo, there was somebody going through the same thing that I just went through. Let me put it on paper. And what I go through always just invokes emotions out of me. So it's like, I'll go through something first, and then, boom. Never even knew I had to listen to what somebody told me. And it's like going off now. Either way, um, pretty much, it, it was kind of hard. Because at first, I did music first. And then I did poetry. So then it's just like, I had such an issue with speaking. Because it's like, I was trying to make sense, but then people couldn't hear me. Like... I could not record myself with a sound engineer in the studio because people would always be like, yo, I hear so much saliva being spit while you're speaking. Honestly, having a little bit hard to speak, but like at one point, I really managed to control it in a better way. But sometimes it goes off, sometimes it doesn't, but at least now I'm able to be more clear as I speak. You know what I'm saying? To me, spoken word poetry is poetry. If somebody has to take the time to insult how you look, chances are they don't even like how they look. So what do you think the word flowetry means? Flowetry? Hmm. Flowetry? Yeah. 
<laughs> like something that sounds nice. Yeah. Yeah. Flower tree? Honestly, no clue. The musical rhythm of water? <laughs> I think the word flower tree's kind of been out there. It's not too creative. It's just like flow and poetry mixed together. Um, so yeah, I would say it best describes my poetry because originally I was a rapper and I'm still a rapper. Some people in my family, they're like 25, 30, like me trying to rap to them, they're not going to really understand me or hear me. So sometimes I really got to like break it down for them and really go slow with poetry. So, but to me, I'm still doing it with a rhythm. See, in the present, we got rappers like Future, telling kids to mess up some commas and all types of trauma, which leads to all types of drama. Future, tell kids to save some money for their future. Dancing is like my joy. Uh, it makes me happy. It happens at any, like I dance literally all the time or whatever. The way I look at my dancing, my dancing is me expressing words that I'm not able to say to a poem or a song at the current moment. For example, I do this thing called the uh, tutting and finger tutting and things along those lines. So to me, it's just like, like my body is like body language. So my body in itself is poetry and my body in itself is rap because my body in itself is art. So to me, I just relate to those by just saying that, yo, if I'm dancing, I'm speaking. You know what I'm saying don't think because I'm not saying the words, I'm not speaking. I mean, dance inspires me through the toughest times and situations in my life. Um, sometimes, you know, they say boys don't cry or whatever it thinks along those lines. So we're living in a generation that really doesn't allow men to be really emotional, but dancing was my number one outlet and allowed me to cry, it allowed me to be happy. So dancing inspires me to just allow, it helps me get through situations. And on top of that, like it helps me, like just, you know what I'm saying, for general, for my own music as a performer, I'm saying it, it helps me be a better performer on stage and things along those lines. So I would say dance inspires everything really. And I just hope to inspire like the youth for this, this generation and adults as well. To just let them know that like we were created for like a bigger purpose. I feel like our music, our art, we're just able, you know what I'm saying? I am more special than Trayvon. He's black, I'm black, we black, and we both young. But he caught the bullet and I didn't. I live when I should it cause every day I sin. And the cost of sin is death. But you let Christ that on the cross hold for me and I still don't seem to come. We're meant to be used to like help people when at their darkest moments, not give the more darker moments to you know what I'm saying? Hold on to. Because like I said, sometimes if we listen to what we listen to without the beat, we wouldn't listen to it anymore. Because what they're actually saying is actually against us. It's not for us. I think poetry is an amazing thing. I think poetry is definitely needed. I think it's really relevant because there's a lot of conscious people, a lot of intelligent people. And people that, quote unquote, don't like rap, but it gives rappers a chance to talk to those who don't like rap through poetry. Um, I think it's really relevant because it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of hard to do poetry and not be deep in a sense. Like, it's like if you do a poet, you kind of have to talk about something intelligent in a sense, so it kind of challenge you, challenges you. So I would say poetry is really relevant to the world only because it challenges you to step it up a notch and talk about something with a purpose. You know what I'm saying? Flower tree is a great word to describe Nathan's poems. Everything really does flow. He's a great performer, and I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed that poetry performance. He's got the moves too. Nathan's poetry and dancing are great, and I really love how he wants to use his talents to keep people inspiring other people to do what they love. This guy is awesome. Nathan, I'm making you my wingman. It's only fair to say that you guys get to experience such talent firsthand and only here on The Journal. Here's Nathan Baya. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, ah, uh, yeah, ah, uh, yeah. How you feeling? You feeling good? You feeling good? I got some light. I got some light. Hold up. Lord, through everything you have got me through, yeah. Without you, I question just what I would do. Lord, through everything you have got me through, yeah. You have to. Come on, come on. Ever go to sleep and dream about death? <laughs> Cause life don't feel like life, yeah Like what's the point of living, if I ain't really living Ever been so depressed, you find life and death So many times, I've gone to sleep Hoping I don't wake up, because when I wake up I wake up to the same old thing, just a different day My day's a nightmare, my night's a nightmare I am just quite scared, yeah, yeah Pill after pill, drink after drink Then I get high, just to get by Wow, the thing about getting high you gotta come back to being low and it's always left my pockets Lower than how I feel to keep it real I realize I express my depression yeah, to everybody but you Whoa, I try to heal through everything 
but you but when I gave it up to you you told me it's not no problem you can take away every problem but but there's just one problem you want me to fight for you then you have to fight for me you want me to fight for you oh oh you have to fight for me yeah you want me to fight for you then you have to fight for me lord i fight for you i pick up my cross and i follow lord through everything you have got me through yeah without you i question just what i would do lord through everything you have got me through yeah without you i question check me out promise to follow no matter what comes my way cause lord you made a way when there wasn't no way that's why i hunt to you i say i recognize i want you to fight for me i'll do right by you i will fight for you listen 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 Sin is separation, so it means to be eliminated. I never want to be separated from his presence. His presence is the present in the present. My struggle is depression. God, take it away. Help me see some better days. Help me live to know your name. Help me not live for the fame. Rather to glorify your name. Your name deserves the glory. Your story over mine. I dedicate all my time to you and only you, cuz. You everything. You the one that got me through. That's why you know I dedicate all my time to you. And I'm gonna end it with this. Said I'm so sick of being called sick. What's the point of me being sick if my sickness doesn't give you wealth for health? Creativity was given by the creator to help people find light when times are dark, but the words I would spark would enslave more than the times of rows of parks. Like heart, I'm standing up because we called to be different, so let's make a difference. In the present, we got rappers that future telling kids to mess up some commas and all types of drama, which just lead to all types of trauma. Future, tell kids to save some money for their future. Why well, go broke to look rich? No MJ, but they don't really, really care about us. They're here to take our money and not give us knowledge man these days it's all about i i did this and i did that and i slept with so and so they make themselves seem high when they's also oh low i want my kids to grow up in a generation that doesn't find celebration and idiotic ways of thinking like think about this yo we be chasing after vanity hoping to find happiness what a life of insanity not the life that god has for me as opposed to trying to be like god it's like i really wanted to be god want everybody to know my story but what's my story compared to his story man it's history that was amazing thank you so thank much you. for being on the show it was great thank you thank you and now that ladies and gentlemen is what i like to call raw talent in its best form and at its finest to hear more of Nathan's poetry and to see more of his dancing, check him out on nathan.bio on Instagram. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the great show we put together for you. Next time on The Journal, you'll be joined by Cheyenne and Alex. I'm your host, Leo. And I'm Jory May. We'll see you next time. Yeah.